spring is here, which means wedding season is right around the corner. You have your hairstyle picked out, your jewelry, your shoes, but what about your makeup? Do you get nervous about cosmetics or maybe just want to look your best for a special event? I'm Amber at ABC Coast to Coast, and if you need a foundation fix or just want some tips from the expert, then stay tuned because I'm speaking to makeup maven Emily Asnavorian, owner of Chica D Makeup here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You can see they've won tons of awards behind me, and I'm going to talk with her about all things makeup as well as answer some of those questions that you viewers have sent in. So check back to check out Emily Asnavorian of Chica D Makeup here on ABC Coast to Coast. Thanks so much for having me in your beautiful studio here. This is great. Chica D Makeup in Philadelphia. Well, thank you so much for coming, Amber. We're delighted to have you as a guest today. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, so Chica D Makeup, that's pretty interesting. I love my job because I get to talk to people with interesting jobs. You make people more beautiful every day. How did that start? How did you get into this career? Well, I have an art background, and I got a job in cosmetics. And in the cosmetic department, it just seemed like a natural fit. I did that for 20 years, and then I wanted to branch out on my own, so I started Chickadee uh, about five years ago, and we've been running strong ever since. A lot of my viewers have written in to ABC Coast to Coast and said that they are looking for younger, more beautiful looking, you know, healthier skin. Do you have any tips for them for skincare? Absolutely. So. I would definitely say to get into a, a good skincare routine is, is so important. So um, what, what I recommend for my clients is that they definitely um, uptake the water, start drinking tons and tons of water, eliminate alcohol and, and caffeine and um, uh, soda if you can, refine sugars, and, and try to get on a clean diet. Believe it or not, those things help. Um, but a skincare routine is going to just ensure that everything's good. Um, Clarisonic cleansing brush is the single biggest thing that I recommend. It, what is that it one is, of those like electric it brushes? Is. What it is, it's like a Sonicare toothbrush, but it's for the face. So it gets the skin ten times cleaner, and it it helps slough off all the dead skin cells, brightens your complexion, softens your skin. And there's one for every skin type. So people that say, "Oh, I have sensitive skin," they can use it. They just get the sensitive brush. So, so many of my viewers are actually on a budget. Um, makeup can be expensive. You, everybody knows you go into Sephora and you spend a million dollars when you don't mean to, right? You're going for one thing. What, um, what, what advice would you give to viewers that are on a budget about makeup must-haves for spring? Sure. And can you buy anything over the counter? Sure, absolutely. Um, the great thing is that most people are looking to get some good eye tips, you know, because it, it is all about the eyes mm -hmm. today. I, there are certain things that I cheap out on, and there are certain things that I definitely say are the splurge. So let's talk about the eyes. So for the eyes, you can definitely get drugstore mascara. I love CoverGirl. Lash Blast Lux is my favorite mascara on the market. And um, believe it or not, I use really cheapy eyeliners. So the waterproof eye pencils that you can get at Ulta, at Avon, they're all the same pretty much. They've got the retractable heads, um, and as long as you get waterproof, they glide on. The ones that I love are from Ulta, so you can get them when they have a sale. I mean, they list for eight bucks, but when they have a sale, you can get them for as cheap as one or two dollars. Um, those are my, those are my probably greatest tips for just the basic, um, and we, we'll go into how to create those certain looks when we go and do the makeup part. <music> Foundation. I have a lot of viewers oh, that sure, wrote in sure, asking sure. about foundation. Are there any foundations that you recommend that you can buy over the counter that's a lot of bang for your buck? To be perfectly honest with you, that is one thing that I don't cheap out on and I don't recommend that my clients cheap out on either because if you think about it, it's that's your face. And if you're going to pick out a foundation that's in a box that you can't try on, how are you going to know what the color looks like on you? Definitely this is the one thing that you should go and get matched. Go to the department store, go to Sephora and talk about the different your your needs. Your needs are different than my needs and so are her needs. So if you say, you know, okay, I'm looking for a good oil-free uh, foundation, if you go to somebody like at, at Sephora, they're going to know what they're talking about and they'll find you the right match, the right color. Um, I think it's really important to get matched with that and I, I think that there are other things that you don't have to spend a lot of money on, but that's definitely one that I wouldn't cheap out on. And so what are your typical jobs? So I know you have weddings, mm -hmm. obviously people are, are 
pounding at your door to do, do their wedding. So you also do special events. What else do you do? What else does Chica do? We do. So we have a studio here in Chestnut Hill where we, um, we have clients that come here for their trial runs for their weddings, but we also offer makeup lessons, which are really fun. So people bring in their makeup to us. They bring in all of their brushes, all of their skincare, and all of their makeup. And we show them how to work with what they have. We keep that, it's just like that TV show, you know, what to keep, what to toss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's really fun. And they leave here with, a, a, you know, a vast array of knowledge. You know, they leave here with the face chart, um, and they have a better idea how to do their makeup. We also were on location with film, with video, with print. And um, we do special event makeup here, and we travel. So... We're doing so a lot. So it sounds like you are moving and shaking and kind of all over the place. What is next for Cheeky D? What's new? What's coming up? Well, Amber, we are really excited. Um, I have some great news. We are expanding to the West Coast. I will be moving to California in the summer, and I would like to introduce you to Stephanie, who will be taking over for the East Coast here. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you as well. Thanks for being on. So you're taking over the East Coast? I am. I am. Inheriting all of this. That is so exciting. We are excited. Are you excited? Very much so. Yeah. So you're going to be coast to coast. So we have East Coast and West Coast. Cheekity, coast to coast. Well, I actually have a lot of questions from viewers. I was inundated okay. with makeup questions. There's okay. a lot of questions. So do you mind if we ask? No, bring it. Do you mind if we ask a few questions from no. viewers? Okay. So first, Michelle from DC. Hi, Michelle. Wants to know, is there Hi, a Michelle. way to avoid buying different foundations as you tan throughout the summer? And how can you get the best color match for foundation? Absolutely. And I think this goes back to what I talked about. Foundation is the most important makeup. Um, there are things and tools. There's airbrush out there. There is um, traditional foundations. Um, there's powder foundations. And people say, how do I know which one to get? I definitely try to avoid the powder foundations for um, people that have um, too dry of a skin. And if, if she's looking to deepen her foundation, a good trick to do is to buy, you know, one makeup and then have a darker one to just add a few drops to once you need, you need oh, that. Oh, that's great. So as she gets darker, yeah, as the summer continues, exactly. she can just adjust her foundation accordingly. Exactly. Oh, that's, that's really interesting. And what about viewers with rosacea? I have a few that have rosacea that sure. are trying to find a nice blend. I have, um, I have quite a few clients with rosacea, and it, and it can be troubling, and it can be really frustrating when you're dealing with such a skin issue, but it can be helped. So if you think about the redness in your skin, this goes back to the color wheel and color theory. So what counters red is green. So if you get a corrector that has green, um, Smashbox makes a great primer that has green in it already. So put a little bit of that on first and then put your foundation on top of it. And just blend down, um, set it with powder, and you should be good to go. If you have any questions, you can always ask me. Lee from Maryland wants to know a quality over-the-counter moisturizer. Do you recommend a specific skin line? Oh, um, absolutely. Uh, skin care is just, uh, it, it makes the biggest difference when you're taking care of your skin. And I would say that if you're looking for a good over-the-counter, you know, drugstore brand, I've heard great things about Olay, the Pro-X line, Regenerist. Um, if you're looking to step up a little bit and you can afford a little bit more, I love the Kate Somerville products. Kate Somerville oh. is sold in Neiman Marcus stores, um, and she's a, um, an esthetician from L.A. She does beautiful, beautiful lotions and potions, and they're not too, too expensive, but... Um, Olay, try that if you want something that's a little okay. more reasonable. And should your moisturizer have an SPF in it, do you think? Oh, yeah. A, a, a sun protection factor of at least 30 is what we recommend for our clients. And it's going to help prevent uh, damage to your skin and freckles and aging and all that stuff. So. Sarah from L.A. wants to know the trick to eyebrow pencils. She feels like her eyebrows are getting thinner, so she wants to draw in her eyebrows a little bit. Is there a trick that you know of? Or there are a couple. Tips? There are a couple different things that Sarah can do, and I would say that we first of all, uh, we'd have to see what color her hair is, sure. and we'd have to match. Um, I use taupe on I would say 80% of my clients because a lot of the a mistake that is commonly made with people is that they fill in eyebrows too dark. So if you take it actually a half a shade lighter and um, Tarte makes my very favorite eyebrow products, and there's two of them. There's, they make a really thin um, pencil that you can just sort of do small upward strokes like you're filling in, um, and that looks really natural. Or they also have a um, product that comes in a jar, and 
it also comes with a brush. So you just dip it in. Oh. It's got color and it's got a little bit of wax. So it's a really nice. So um, it's easier to apply. It is. And that's better for people with sparse lashes. So, okay. I mean, I'm sorry, sparse brows. Annette from New York. Hi, Annette. Hi, Annette. Wants to know um, about eyes as well, actually. She wants to know when applying eye cream, do you put it on the whole eye area or just the lids? And how do you prevent creases after the eyeshadow or makeup is applied? So when you're applying your eye cream, you just need to use a very tiny amount. So just take about a half of a size of a pea, use your ring finger and pat it on your orbital bone. You don't need to rub it up into here. You don't need to rub it on your lids. Um, and after you apply your eye cream is when you want to put your eyeshadow base on. And then after you apply your eyeshadow, we, when you get what's called fallout, that's what it's called when the eyeshadow gets underneath here, you need to get a Q-tip and then um, dip it in eye makeup remover and clean up afterwards. Then you put your foundation on. That's a common mistake that people make. So, oh, so you should put your eyeshadow on first your and then your foundation. First. Yeah, oh, so that's, see, that'll, prevent, yeah, that'll prevent all, you know, a lot of people say I have dark circles, but when it comes down to it, sometimes that's just eyeshadow. And then we have Chelsea from Dallas wants to know how she can keep her makeup to last a long time, especially her lipstick. Sure, hi Chelsea. Um, so there's all kinds of things like when we're doing bridal makeup and it's got to stay on all day what we do we use primers so we use um, a primer underneath of a foundation so a, a really perfect primer that is really popular right now is smashbox um, they make a product called uh, photo finish and there's uh, tarte they make other primers there's so many companies that make primers hourglass i mean there's makeup forever but what the primer does is it's like gesso for the canvas, so it helps your makeup adhere to your skin and it, and it lasts longer. There's same, the same thing with eyeshadow base. Again, that's going to help extend the wear of your eyeshadow. And then lipstick, as far as that goes, we like to use long wear lip color, so like those double-ended things if you have a long event that you're going to. Uh, if you just prefer to... Um, not do that, then line your lips on the flat end with the pencil. I'll show you that when we go over. Um, and that will use that before your lipstick or your lip gloss. And that'll so it kind of gives you a little bit of a base before yes. you put the lipstick on. Yes. Oh, that's a great tip. So you got a great tip, Chelsea. There you go. Thanks, Chelsea. Okay, I ask this of all of my guests. So just okay. take a moment, think sure. about it for a moment. What is something that people would be surprised to learn about you or your business? That makeup, it, it's, not, it's not all playing with crayons it's you know there's a business aspect to it there's the uh, contracts and you have to get a contract when you're a makeup artist and there's emails and there's phone calls and there's advertising it's not I would say maybe 20% of my job is actually makeup so <laughs> the rest is people, all the other work that goes around all the back doing, end work that goes into it so people are always like they think I you know just work on the weekends oh it must be so nice to have off during the week I'm like <laughs> yeah, not when you own your own business right? oh no no yeah. no yeah. It's all the time, 24-7. Yeah, so you guys are in luck because talking about all this makeup, it's a hands-on art, right? So Emily here has some tips and tricks for spring that she's going to show me, I believe. And Absolutely. you're going to demonstrate some makeup things. So Absolutely. grab your makeup bag and a mirror and check right back with us for tips and tricks for spring. All right, you guys got your makeup bags and your little notepad and maybe a mirror? Because Emily, the expert, is going to give us some makeup tips and tricks for spring and show you, I'm being very brave, this is me without makeup on, how to apply a beautiful face. I'm taking my ring finger because that applies the least amount of pressure and I'm patting on the orbital bone. So the orbital bone is on the outer part of the eye. There is no need to go in here, there's no need to rub all over the lids, so just tap, 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 tap. small upward strokes, gentle. The, another tip that I can give to everyone is, you know, it's, you're not using the same pressure that you would use to sign a check or you're not pressing down really hard. You want to almost have a limp wrist when you're applying certain things, especially eyebrows, because you don't want it to be too dark. So real, real soft strokes. And going up. And the thing that I love about this is it has the other side where you can brush it out. So brush it up and over, up and over, and voila. So when I'm working, I like to use um, the oil-based eye makeup remover, and quite honestly, I get 
whatever is on sale. This is, it just has to be oil so that it breaks down the waterproof makeup. There's another budget tip for you. Yeah. Look up for me, please. Thank you. So see this? You see all the stuff I'm getting off? On, on here. And you just, this is another way to clean up your eye. Can you turn your head that way, please? So if you look up, you're just sort of swiping this, and then it, this whole area is clean and ready to go, and it's sort of lifted the makeup up on the end. So it's damp, and press and roll into the skin. Can you see what it's doing? It's making the skin look like a second skin instead of a big, heavy, cakey makeup. Mm -hmm. Now, are those expensive? Well, they're not cheap, but you can reuse them, and it comes with a cleaner. I think they're about um, $15 each, something oh. like that. But you can get them at Sephora, you can get them at Ulta, you can get them online. But it really does a nice job of making the skin look seamless and not makeup y. At least you have that base there. You see? See how nice? Oh, yeah, that's perfect. So that's a great tip, a beauty blender. So these are my go to Duralash Naturals. You can get them in the drugstore, they're cheap. Um, you can order the, you can order any of this stuff online, by the way. But you know, I always like to say the al alternate places. Shorts and mediums, the not free naturals, are my favorite. There's also a company called Eyelore. These are beautiful lashes. Um, they're a little bit of a step up from Dura Lash, but you can get these in Sephora and in Ulta. Um, and I'll give Amber the treat today, since she's she's Yay. the queen. I'm going to put a little tiny drop on the case, and I'm going to take this. This, I like the flat end tweezers, and this is Tweezer Man, so I'm just going to pick this up. I'm going to do a little dip on the flat end. So you don't need to do it like that because you're just, you only need the glue to go where it's going on her eye. Keep your eyes open and look down for me, please. I'm going to put a little tiny one out there. So these are the mediums, and they look really, they just give a nice amount of volume and length. I'm also going to choose some shorts in there too, just to balance so it doesn't look crazy. But sometimes you have to place them and play with them. I usually push them up from underneath a little bit, like you're sort of taming them. Do you have any tips for people putting on eyelashes at home? Yes. So think about this, ladies. When, when I'm applying lashes on you, my arm's going in at this angle. When you're applying lashes to yourself, your arm's going in at this angle. Now make sure you anchor your arm so that you're going in, in and down. You have to get the lashes on the shelf. So the shelf is, keep your eye open and look down for me, please. Thank you. The shelf is right here. So it's going, it's fitting right on top of her lashes that she has there. And individual lashes are the most natural feeling lashes. I prefer these over full sets any day. So in a minute, once the glue has dried, and this is surgical adhesive, by the way, so it's safe for the eye area. It's ophthalmolog um, ophthalmologist tested. I'm going to curl it so that it'll look more natural and it'll feel better. So this is the look for spring and summer. Bright colors, flawless complexion, thanks to the makeup maven here, Emily. Thank you so much for the expert. Thank thanks you, for being Amber. on ABC Coast It was my Coast absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. You guys got some tips from the expert. So hopefully you have your notebooks out, your makeup bags, your mirror, and you're ready to hit the town because I'm all made up. I'm ready to go hit the town. So check back to check out ABC Coast to Coast. Mm -hmm.